and it says on original Harley Davidson literature if you ride your bike all night with the lights on, the battery will be flat in the morning. <laughs> Nineteen forty eight Harley WL, which is a sort of civilian version of the WLA WLC. Much different about a civilian as opposed to a military? Not really. I think it should have a front crash bar on this one. I don't think they ever had rear crash bars. They might have done. But I don't think they did. I've got to do a bit more investigation on it. Uh, it's definitely a 48 frame because of these lugs in here. The civilian's held on with a plate that bolts to the coil and then U-bolts go around the frame tube here but this has got the square studs welded on the frame so that makes it 48 engine number on there is irrelevant it's probably been stamped up in Holland I would have thought because the, the Dutch put numbers on them here as well to get them registered that's another misnomer really because they never had frame numbers the only way you can date it is by little things like that uh, the width of these gives it as 48 mudguards up underneath, I don't know if you can see it or not. And that says 348-4062, which means the three means it's a 45 cubic inch. 48 means it was stamped in 1948, that casing. And it's the 4062nd engine off the production line in 48. Um, the other side, I can't find a number on it, but that's not unusual to have mismatched cases. Um, the other thing that donates it to 48 frame is there's a third hole in there You've got the original ones just two two bolts to hold the clutch cable They put a third hole in it in 48 which is up under there. You can't see it, but it's up under there Yeah, so just lots of little bits have gone through just to find out what it is But it, it's it's got the wrong carburetor on it It's off of a much earlier bike wrong speedo head that front support bar is wrong but only by an eighth of an inch so that ain't going to make the slightest bit of difference rear mudguard braces are correct for 46 onwards I think it might be a 47 mudguard, not too sure, it doesn't make any difference the rear stand clip is wrong that's off a of WLA, it should be longer there but again that doesn't make any difference front wheel's wrong that's a big twin or WLC wheel which again, you can change it at a later date if you want to, it just means changing one of these rockers over. How can you tell? The, the because it's on? a bolt-on, it shouldn't be a bolt-on. It's okay. an interchangeable wheel, only, only Harley WLCs and big twins have those. Yeah, correct engine, rear stand bent to shit as usual on the Harleys. It's crap. So I'll straighten all that out and you can put some braces in here and make them stronger so it's all been welded up. Because the stand, as you lift it down, it goes from there and goes there all of this where that's bent in and buckled they try and weld them but once they're bent they've gone mm -hmm. so you just straighten them out and try and put some bracing in it it's had a belt drive fitting instead of the chain drive for the primary which is always good quietens them down so then basically it's just small bits and pieces that are worn out it's got the wrong kickstart the wrong kickstart pedal which is loose it hasn't got a split in there I could possibly put that on the milling machine and put a slot in it but like I said to Simon it's bits you can change later on if you want to get it perfectly original you know seat post bush is gone the couple of dollars a couple of euros the brake bush is gone um, I was just going to take the clutch apart the clutch bush is gone Basically, any moving part on it where you ride them a lot is worn out. Yeah. Which is understandable <coughs> for something that old, you know. Um, 
and the bushes are gone in there. But for the few euros it's going to cost, you might as well do it, you mm. know. It's got an issue with the charging, which I don't think there is an issue with the charging. Somebody told Simon that the red light should come back on when you reach about 40 mile an hour to tell you that it's charging. I've never, ever, ever heard of that. It's a standard 32E three brush generator. So why is it not charging the battery as it goes it on? It is charging it. it so is why charging. is it running at a, a power then? Because they're crap. <laughs> Basically, there's a thing on there, I'll, I'll show you it in a minute. And it says, original Harley Davidson literature, if you ride your bike all night with the lights on, the battery will be flat in the morning. <laughs> it's all to do with the adjustment of the third brush. What they're saying is you can put a link wire between those. What it is, one armature is charging yeah. on one side, yeah, all the time. All the time it's running. The second one only comes in when it's under real load or with the lights on but it isn't putting enough charge out if you link those two together you can get full charge all the time but you have to run it with the lights on all the time otherwise you'll boil the battery okay um so it's, it could just be this matter of the third brush is set up completely wrong you've got to check all the outputs on it when it's running but basically they don't work what a lot of people do is change them from that cutout relay so all that cutout relay does is shunt it over to make the other armature work yeah or the other field core <clears throat> um you can put a two brush on it with a voltage regulator which is a much better way to go but they're ugly you've got big dirty great voltage regulator hanging on the side it's not something i've heard anyone talk about before though if you're going to ride one all the time you need to get it right that's the issue yeah things that sit in somebody's garage they fire it up once in a blue moon and leave it on a trickle charge they'll be fine but it's just a matter of getting that dynamo set up right. I, I haven't really done a lot of them, so it's something I'll have to study up on to work out. But I mean, it's charging. As soon as you fire it up, the light goes out, which is normal. And yeah. I've never, ever, ever heard of one where if the light comes back on, it tells you it's charging. I, I don't believe that's right, but who am I to say? I've never heard of it, ever. The carburetor's wrong. It's leaking fuel, so I've got to sort all that out. Needs a rubber ducky float in it. Once the hand clutch fitted, so it's all just flapping around. So took the wheels out, all the brake lines are new, so that's good. All the wheel bearings feel good, so that's good. Headstock's tight. Yeah, so we're just gonna take this apart and have a look at the clutch really. Having the belt clutch in it, you shouldn't need the misting oil, total loss misting oil system in there as much. I mean, it gives okay. gives the clutch plates a little bit of oil, but it's it's minimal, you know. So we'll pop that cover off and have a look. All right, that should be a tab washer on there. So what, what issues do you normally find with the the clutch foot leaving? Just all worn out everything worn out I mean this looks like it's got the wrong bits in it as well so we'll the spring off see that with the spring off yeah that's at it so it's got the correct washer on it with the two flat sides two star washers that's right that locks into the back plate which is right I think there should be a friction plate that side. I'm not 100% sure, I'll have to have a look in the books again. But, but like I say, all the bits are sort of pennies, if you know what I mean. Mm. You know, you're not talking anything major league expensive for, for all of this. Yeah, that's bollocks. pretty sure I can't remember which way round it goes I think they've got all the friction plates in the wrong way round so you can see that that shaft is extremely worn out see it mm. whether you want to go to the expense of getting a new one I don't know what I'm going to do is put a definitive list together yeah. of everything so you, it's missing the front marker lamp which you can get 
but they're nearly a hundred euros. Yeah. Um, so it's all down to what Simon wants to spend, you know. He just wants me to get it right. But this will eventually just snap. So you've got to you've got to get the clutch right. Clear piece of plastic. A piece of metal. So let's have a look in the book and see what it should be like. It's very, very worn out. You can see that hole's oval. <laughs> so that basically should be a nice rotating fit in there. Which it clearly is mm. not. Yeah. It's well worn out. So they've tried to make all of this work. So we've got our pedal. Then you should have that disc there, then your friction disc, that goes on the back side, that's that one, with that lump in it there, yeah, mm -hmm. that goes that way up, and then that hooks into that when it's together, so basically they had all the friction discs on the wrong side, should only have one, and that goes between that and that. So that wasn't doing anything. I mean, you'll get friction out of it, but not correct. So we need, just need to get a new friction disc for it. You can buy the bush, 241036A. That's the bush that goes in there. Then we'll have to have a look and see if we can get a, a pedal or a center pin for the pedal. They might do those separately, I'm not sure. bit of oil in there but right they've done it as a drop out tube from there on the oil misting system because it doesn't need it because you've got a rubber belt instead of the chain so they've replaced that I would imagine they've done the clutch plates so I'll check the clutch you, you measure between that plate there and that plate there and that gives you adjustment on that so what you can do is that there which it feels like he's plugged up anyway because you don't need the oil on the oil pump looks like they've taken all the washers out already that screw there has got a needle on the end of it see that okay. so from factory that would have very thin washers underneath it and that allows oil to bypass and mist into that casing okay. to keep the oil the chain lubed up obviously with the rubber you don't need it so we'll clean all that up, make sure it's locked down nice and tight. And that should stop any oil going into that side of the casing, which isn't the main leak on this thing anyway. And then underneath here on the scavenge pump, see that screw there? Well, that's exactly the same as that one up the top. But there's a hole here and it should have a pipe that comes over the top of the gearbox, rests and drips oil onto the chain. Another total loss system. But with modern chains and modern chain lubes and all that, you can just delete it, which is what they've done. So just, again, check that tape is nice and tight in there. Right, it's obviously leaking oil. You can see it's coming off the bottom of the oil switch, which is quite a common thing. The seal goes on around here. See all the oil in there? Mm. See it? Yeah. So that's dripping down there. Look, you can see it on the pipe. I don't know what that is. They wrap around there, but it's dripping off of that union as well. So we'll endeavour to get that tightened up. That's your two main oil leaks on this thing there. Possibly the gearbox is dripping a bit. What I'll do is clear it all up. Gearbox is full of oil, which is a good sign because normally they don't got any oil in them because they just pour out. But that's full up. So we'll um, I'll clean all the bed up, get it all wiped down, put some paper down, and we can see exactly where it's leaking from then. Brake bush is gone. So we might as well do that while we're doing it. Like I say, it's totally up to him how much money you want to spend, but all these little things make a lot of difference when you're riding it. So I'll we'll take the footboard off of this side and we'll pop the clutch, the, the brake shaft out. It, it can be the shaft, it can be the bush. We've got to look at it, you know. But if it means I've got to ream the pedal out. Like I said to Simon on the phone yesterday, I can make all this shit, but it, 
if it's seven euros or five euros, it, it's not worth doing. Just no. Buy it. said that shaft's too worn so it's probably just a new bush in there that's the wrong clip on there see the bush is sort of semi the same thickness all the way around there isn't it mm -hmm. on that side see there's hardly anything there it's just worn out and we'll get a new bush for that for the couple of quid it's going to cost. They've done all sorts of things on it where it's worn out, like that's been welded up, look. The brake stop. All the spring holes get worn out. See the slots in them, where the springs go. You've got to remember how old it is, you know. I think I'll be pretty worn out at that age. I am. <laughs> well, you're in your 50s now. I know, old man. <laughs> You undo these, loosen these, and then that you can move that brush there. Okay. And that it's either amps, it either ups the amps or the charge rate. I can't remember exactly what it is, but see if that isn't charging enough to click in the second armature, then it will never charge charge yeah. properly. Um, I've never I've never set one up properly but there is a way of doing it they they have a thing a machine called a growler you, you put that on um, and I'm not quite I'm not even sure how it works I mean I've got all the write-ups on it but let me just put a mark on there before I touch it and that as far as I'm aware you loosen those off and then that, I thought you could move. Maybe I'm lying. Yeah, you can move it. See, that's just stuck, but it'll move on those slots. Okay. So that lets you adjust the third brush. Which way you turn it and everything, I don't know. I'm going to have to read up on it all. I can't remember. And that, like I say, I'll put more amps out or more. It, it changes the position when that relay clicks in to fire the second um, um, well, I call it an armature, it's nice, a field winding. Yeah, so basically, all the floppy bits, get all them sorted out. And it'll make it a much nicer bike to ride. All the brakes are good, like I say, the clutch seems good. Sort out the charging system. But really, that's, that's all I can do is do it by the manual. And then he'll have to take it away and ride it, because, you know, it needs riding for sort of 50, 60 miles and then see if the battery's flat, that's all you can do. Yeah. I mean, I can test what that's putting out and when it's putting it out, but if you put too much into it, you can boil the battery. I've got fuel dripping out of here, which is normally your needle seat's gone, but you can buy all of them, they're no money, and it's leaking out the bowl as well. So just a service on the carburetor more than anything. Iron heads, which I think is correct, instead of the big aluminium heads. Should have a Harley Davidson paint and sticker on there. I don't I haven't got any of them. And I'll just check out and see if it should have front or rear crash bars and then which again you can buy, add at a later date, it, it's not an issue. Silly things like all of this was in wrong. So that's all been done. As I took the wheels out, you might as well do it as you're going along, you know. Rear hub wasn't set up properly, so I've done that. That should have a funny pedal like that, rubber, big rubber pedal like that. It's still got the original varnish and cork float in it from God knows how long ago, which are renowned for going wrong. The varnish breaks down, petrol soaks the cork, yeah, and it doesn't float anymore. So it just pisses fuel in everywhere. They're good, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> but all in all, it's a it's a nice bike. Next week on the workshop goes to the bowl.
that goes to the bulb. So that 1948 Warren is exactly the same as a 41 okay. on the charging system. 